Welcome to Bloomington Today. I'm Kaylin Cockreel. Thanks for joining us. Bloomington Parks and Recreation is embracing winter and inviting residents to join in the festivities of the ninth annual Winterfet celebration. This year we actually have expanded Winterfet out. It's our longest uh, period that we've ever had it. It's going to be January 21st to 29th, so we have eight days of activities for the first time. In the past it's been more of a weekend thing or a Friday through Sunday. So we've uh, we actually expanded it with more activities this year. In years past, Winterfet has proven to be a fun-filled family weekend that literally has something for everyone. Back by popular demand, you'll find ice fishing for beginners on Bush Lake. Here, Minnesota DNR representatives will be on hand in heated ice houses to give fishing lessons. Don't worry if you don't have the tools or equipment, that will be provided. This free event runs from 11 to 2 p.m. on Saturday, January 21st. Also, you'll be given the opportunity to see Bloomington from a unique perspective by taking a ride on a dog sled at the Pond Dakota Winter History Festival. From noon to 4 p.m. on Sunday, January 29th, stop by Pond Dakota Mission Park to take your ride for $2. People are very, very active, obviously, in the summer, much more so. We have a lot of good activities. Uh, they're scattered throughout the city, tons of things you can do, but in the wintertime, we just definitely want to make sure that people are taking advantage of all they can. And it adds to the whole quality of life, actually, in Bloomington. Um, having a wintertime festival, um, activities you can go out and do and just kind of embrace the whole year round instead of just the, uh, the very nice summers that we have. There are several activities happening during Winterfet, which again runs from the 21st through the 29th, including hockey tournaments at Westwood and Running Park, a photo scavenger hunt at Civic Plaza, and a broomball tournament at Tret Ball Park. For a complete list of Winterfet events, visit the city's website and keyword search winter. It's time now for another In the Loop segment, where we'll bring you news and events happening within Bloomington's South Loop District. It's been a few months since we've last visited the Radisson Blue Hotel, and a representative from Mortensen says the parking ramp is around 80% complete with minor interior work and exterior panel work left. The skeleton of the structure is complete, and the first few months of 2012 will include precast and metal panel installation beginning this month. The same representative from Mortensen Development says the project is on track for the anticipated March 2013 opening. Because most of the city's land area has already been developed, most of today's projects focus on redevelopment and revitalizing structures already in place. That, however, is not the case with one last new development taking shape in southwest Bloomington. The lots are sectioned off. Mailboxes are being installed, and a few of the many homes that will stand on this site are looking more and more ready to welcome their first owners. This is Hidden Bluffs, the largest single-family development since the early 1990s to be built in Bloomington. Bloomington's a fully developed city, so we don't have a lot of land to develop for single-family uses or other uses except through redevelopment. So this was one of the last remaining areas in the city without development. Um, the Bethany campus sold that off to Pulte Homes. The plan is to build 40 homes, ranging in price from $350 to $600,000. According to Markegaard, a few dozen additional homes will result in significant benefits for Bloomington. Their development really helps uh, add housing choices in the city, uh, new single-family homes, um, which will attract new families to the city, keep our schools vital. A recent construction update tells us that the model home and the construction of nine of the 40 homes is currently underway. The timeline for completion of Hidden Bluffs is on a lot-by-lot -lot basis. Well, have some of your Christmas decorations seen their last holiday? That's okay. Lights burn out and Christmas trees lose their luster. Hennepin County has a place for those items. Many residents may not know that tangled, non-working strings of holiday lights can be recycled at the South Hennepin Recycling and Problem Waste Drop-Off Center, located at 1400 West 96th Street. 
For the disposal of live Christmas trees, many waste haulers will offer pickup service during the first few weeks of January. Trees can also be brought to a yard waste drop-off site like SKB Environmental in Minneapolis or Resource Recovery Technologies in Shakopee. For questions, call Hennepin County Environmental Services at 612-348-3777. City Parks and Recreation staff has had to deal with their fair share of Mother Nature's unpredictability this winter. As record-setting warm temperatures and the lack of snowfall made it impossible to open up outdoor skating rinks on time. December 17th has come and gone. That was the original opening date for the 15 outdoor skating rinks scattered around the city of Bloomington. But cold weather has made its way to the city and as of December 30th, Many warming houses and outdoor rinks are ready for skaters. Oak Grove, Poplar Bridge, and Running Parks are the latest openings. To find the rink nearest you, log on to the city's website and keywords search Outdoor Ice. Here you can find the dates and hours of warming house operation, a map of the outdoor rinks around Bloomington, along with what amenities are available at a specific rink, like if there are floodlights or hockey nets. Rinks are also available for rental. Interested residents are asked to contact Parks and Recreation at 952-563-8877. It's now time for a short break. When we come back, we'll be joined by a representative from the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau to discuss what's in store for 2012. Stay right here. Mom, Dad, I need to talk to you. I'm scared. I don't think I can go back to school tomorrow. There's a guy and some of his friends who are after me. They hate my clothes, the way I talk, everything about me. I know. You're stupid and ugly. Did you hear me? I'm scared. Listen to what they have to say. Take a stand. Lend a hand. Stop bullying now. I'm Gene Winstead, mayor of the city of Bloomington. I'm really excited about a collaborative between the cities of Bloomington, Richfield, and Edina. In partnership with Blue Cross Blue Shield, everything we do in the planning and development of our city, we can keep in mind different ways to allow people to live healthier lives. The initiative is Do Town, and we're looking for the help of all of you. Let me see you shake that thigh. Come on and work that thigh. Welcome back to Bloomington Today. We are now joined by Jan Crails. Jan is the Vice President of Marketing for the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome, Jan. Hi, how are you today? I'm wonderful. Great. Well, the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau is embracing 2012 with some great upcoming events and packages. Why don't you start off by telling us about the big ticket packages that are available for residents who want a little vacation while staying in town. Exactly. The big ticket package was created to be a tourist in your own town, basically. It's a great hit with our out-of-town visitors, so we thought why not offer it to our local um, residents as well. And what the big ticket is, it's much like the Disney Park Hopper Pass. Okay. So you get to visit six attractions within a three-day period and it's very affordable. All the rates are substantially discounted by 30%, and the great attractions are, of course, Mall of America, Nickelodeon, the Sea Life Minnesota. You can head over to St. Paul for the Science Museum of Minnesota, the Minnesota Zoo, the, the uh, IMAX Theater, and of course the water park, which is very popular this time of year. Absolutely. It's almost the concept of buying in bulk is cheaper than buying individually. Exactly. And you can take three days to do it. So once you activate your pass, it's good for three days. If you happen to purchase the big ticket for a gift, it's good for a year. Mm -hmm. And adults are $79 and children are 69 so it's really a great affordable um, family out or activity to do this winter. Absolutely. Well, one thing that we talked about earlier in this particular show was the progress made on the Radisson Blue Hotel over this past year. Mm -hmm. um, this is the first hotel to be connected to the Mall of America. How does the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau see that benefiting the city of Bloomington? You know, we're thrilled to have to be the second destination that will be featuring the new Radisson Blue 
Hotel, the first one just opened in Chicago, and we were able to see a sneak peek of some of the prototype rooms of this very modern, oh. contemporary hotel. Um, you know, it's, it's beautiful. It'll be great for visitors as well as um, business travelers. They have great meeting and event space within the hotel. And of course, ha being connected right to Mall of America will be fabulous for, um, you know, everyone who's been kind of really wanting that direct connect to the mall to go shop and so forth. So very excited. It's our hometown brand. So glad they chose uh, the Mall of America location. Absolutely. Well, this city has many other award-winning hotels mm -hmm. um, as well. And one way the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau chooses to recognize the men and women in the hospitality industry is through the Diamond Service Awards. Tell us a bit about what that is. Well, we're very proud of our Bloomington Diamond Service Awards program. It was started 17 years ago, and it really was meant to honor frontline hospitality personnel. Um, we realize that really providing that customer service is a great reason for repeat visitation to our city, mm -hmm. and we honor 16 categories from best hostess to best bartender, best server, best housekeeper, reservationist. So we really try to, to you know, meet a broad spectrum of our um, hospitality employees, not only in hotels and restaurants, but in the retail industry as well. And as we know, Mall of America is a very important yes. um, retail component to our city. Absolutely. Well, can you let us in on a couple of the details for the 2012 Diamond Service Awards that's coming up here soon? Well, you know, it's always the Gala Award Ceremony for Bloomington, and it's a spectacular event. We really put it out to be a really top-notch uh, event for the frontline service personnel. Mm -hmm. And um, there's always some secret entertainment, which is always fun. Okay. But the highlight is really honoring our 85 finalists, who are the finalists in the 16 categories. And um, it's held every March at the Doubletree Hotel right here in Bloomington, formerly the Radisson South. And we also recognize the Spirit of Hospitality winner, who, which is a prestigious award given away every year, uh, Hall of Fame award. And we also honor the Bloomington Food Safety Awards. Now, those awards are given by the city of Bloomington for those establishments that have really um, practice safe food handling uh, practices and food safety. So it's another great component of, you know, a great place to stay and eat and shop. Absolutely. All noticeable, very uh, noteworthy occupations and things in that sense to be recognized. Um, but why does the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau choose to recognize this industry in the way that it does. You keep saying frontline, right? What does that mean? Frontline are really those employees that do meet our customers one on one. It's mm -hmm. the first welcome in the van, you know, from the van driver from the airport. It's the greeting you get on the phone from our hotel reservationists. Mm -hmm. And again, it was going back to ensuring good customer service brings repeat visitors back to Bloomington. It's a great motivational tour, tool, and it's just a, an all around great way to showcase our city and Mall of America. Absolutely. Any other big news coming up for Bloomington in 2012? Well, we're excited. 2011, um, we did have a strong year, so we we're happy to see the hotel and the economy coming back. Um, mm -hmm. So that was um, strong, positive news in our hospitality industry. Um, you know, the Convention and Visitors Bureau works hard year-round. Our goal is really to bring meetings and conventions and special events and visitors to our city to stay in our hotels, to shop, and to eat. And, of course, we do that through selling many fun packages on our website, getaway packages, family fun, big tickets, mm -hmm. that all is part of the experience for a great getaway vacation. And um, some notable events that we host every year are the um, Iron Girl Duathlon over at Normandale Park, brings in 1,500 wow. female athletes to run a run two miles, bike 22, and run two miles. That's wow. every September, so that's a, a great event. We just secured the Women's Half Marathon which will take place in August, which is a brand new event. Um, and they're um, shooting for 5,000 attendees. Wow. Again, women from all around the United States. Um, it's the 100th anniversary of the Girl Scouts of America having their big annual national convention right here in Bloomington and Mall of America. So lots of Girl Scouts gonna be here in March. Um, the Ryder Cup, even though it's 2016, it's an event that we're already working on and planning for with our hotels and our visitors that will be arriving um, for that event out at Hazeltine National Golf Course. So lots of things. There's always an updated calendar of events on our website, um, lots of information, visitor guides, deals, discounts. So 
that's where you can find it all in Bloomington. Wonderful. Well, it sounds like 2012 is going to be a, a big year. We're excited. For Bloomington. We're excited. Wonderful. Well, we'd like to thank Jan for being here with us today. If you'd like more information on any of the events we talked about today, visit the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau's website at www.bloomingtonmn.org. It's now time for a short break. We'll be right back. Today, more than ever before, women are on the front lines of America's defense. These brave women struggle and sacrifice to help keep our country secure. They deserve to be recognized for their service as guardians of freedom. Please support the American Legion's efforts to serve the growing number of women veterans. Go to legion.org slash honor veterans to find out how you can help. They call them the golden years, and for many seniors, they are. But for too many others, retirement is like a prison. Do you have any jacks? The difference? This couple saved for their retirement, and this couple didn't. It's your choice. Choose to save. To learn how to get started, get your free Power to Choose brochure, because your retirement can truly be your golden years. Welcome back to Bloomington Today. A few weeks ago, we were joined by a Cornerstone Development Coordinator who told us about Cornerstone's annual Santa Shop event. We were on site before the holidays as numerous volunteers helped prepare for this event. No amount of holiday decorations seemed to be enough as City Chamber of Commerce members, along with other groups and Cornerstone staff, decked the halls and prepared Cornerstone's meeting rooms to be transformed into Santa shop. And I don't mean the workshop in the North Pole. It's a time when we invite all the children we've served throughout the year to come back and they're able to pick out gifts for their family members, so for their moms and siblings. And it's, we rely a lot on the donations and the support of the community and our volunteers to provide the gifts for the kids to pick out. What's unique about Santa Shop is kids learn the joy of giving gifts rather than just being the recipients of them. During Santa Shop, a child is taken by an elf to a room like this one. This is the gift room for ages 0 to 3. Say that a child has a young sibling. They can select a gift for their brother or sister and wrap it themselves. Poya says the uniting of Bloomington businesses and community leaders ultimately makes programs like Santa Shop possible. This building is just completely covered in Christmas, extremely festive. We could not do it without the volunteer groups to come in and help. And they bring their creativity, their ideas, and share their time with us. And really, and a lot of what we like to see is that if people come here and have a good experience, they want to share it with other people so that hopefully it'll help us build on this program every year. For privacy reasons, we weren't able to be there when families came and picked out gifts from Cornerstone's Santa Shop, but we're happy to report that the 2011 Santa Shop served more than 380 children in just three days. Human Services Division's annual Holiday Joy program was able to help a number of people this year as well. This program provides Bloomington adults with disabilities with a gift card during the holiday season who may not otherwise receive a gift. A total of $1,757.83 was raised through contributions from city employees and a business bake sale. The Employee Advisory Committee held a popcorn fundraiser at Civic Plaza, and local business Larkin Hoffman Law Firm annually holds an office-wide bake sale. Proceeds from the two events, along with all other individual donations, were pooled to purchase gift cards for 47 disabled residents. Human Services would like to thank everyone for their generous contributions that ultimately helped make the 2011 Holiday Joy program a success. And even though the weather outside can be unbearable at times, pet owners have recognized the importance of getting their animal exercise even on the chilliest of days. City Parks and Recreation staff would like to remind residents of the rules and regulations regarding leash laws in the city. Winter walks and playtimes with your animals in the city parks are no different in January than in the warmer months. 
and recently city staff has been receiving complaints about off-leash animals in city parks. Some of the thoughts that, that concern us about that is because the parks are for everyone and some people aren't comfortable around dogs. Um, dogs do create a, a mess from time to time in the parks. Um, so we're really hoping to encourage people to make sure they understand what the laws are, the, the ordinances here in Bloomington. Make sure your dog has a license. Uh, they have to have a leash um, and that leash has to be six foot or less. Um, and we're really hoping that we can create a great atmosphere for everybody out in our parks. If you're a resident eager to get your dog some unrestrained exercise, check out the city's off-leash dog park, located at 111th Street between Nesbitt and Hampshire Avenues. This is a 25-acre open area with trees and walkable trail areas. The users out there have done a great job in creating a trail around uh, the park so you can walk the perimeter with your dog. Uh, there's even a little pond there that you can bring your dog to. One concern at this time of the year, especially with the weather that we've had, is to just be aware of the ice thickness. So if your dog does go out onto the ice, um, you want to make sure that you can get your dog back. Um, and so be cautious with that, but have a great time out at the off-leash area. Bloomington's off-leash dog recreation area is open one half hour before sunrise until 10 p.m. seven days a week. For directions and a complete list of site rules, visit the city's website, keyword search dog. Now it's time for another City Faces segment where we take you into a day in the life of a city employee. Today we'll introduce you to plan check engineer Mike Salon. Take a look. Salon is a part of the Building Inspections Division in the Community Development Department. He's worked for the City of Bloomington for a total of 16 years, 8 years as a building inspector and 8 years as a plans examiner. Well. It's an interesting job for me since my background is building. Um, the building code, building codes are laws that govern the construction uh, of safe buildings. And uh, I'm challenged by having to constantly learn new things about construction, about building materials, and uh, the code's constantly changing too. So that's one thing that challenges me. Another is um, working with homeowners and sometimes contractors who are reluctant to see the value in the code. And if I can, um, after spending time with them, convince them that the code is there to create safe buildings for everyone to use, then uh, I feel I've uh, accomplished something that day. So that's, that's challenging for me. Salon was a carpenter for many years before getting into building inspections and plan reviews. One of his first inspection jobs was at the Mall of America's Underwater World. Currently, I'm working on um, the circus is coming to town, Cirque du Soleil, and um, there's a new huge office build out for GSA, a Government Services Administration, at Norman Point Two. That's a big job. Um, a new drugstore is going to be built at 90th and Lindale soon. We've been working on that and the uh, student center at Normandale Community College is under construction. In addition, there's a new uh, credit union that went up at Lindale on 95th. That was a good project, turned out very well. And about a 101 unit apartment building called Apple, Applewood Point 2 over at 81st and Russell. According to Salon, some plan reviews are simple and can be done in a matter of hours. However, more complicated building plans can take weeks to complete. We go through quite a bit of work here, uh, more so when the economy was better, but it's picking up now, I'm glad to say. And uh, so in a week, um, it really varies. It's a very interesting job in that I don't just look at plans, but I also talk to homeowners, architects, designers, contractors, spend a lot of time on the phone, and... Um, a lot of time at my desk looking at plans. When Salon finds some time outside of his work, he enjoys downhill skiing, hiking, and kayaking. He also loves to travel, and since his visit to Italy in 2001, he's been trying to master the Italian language. Well, that's all the time we have for today. To get more information on city projects, parks, road construction, and events, visit the city's website. 
To check out past Bloomington Today shows or other city productions, visit Bloomington's YouTube channel, accessible right from the city's homepage. That and so much more is online right now at www.ci.bloomington.mn.us. If Facebook or Twitter isn't your thing, sign up for eSubscribe to have updates sent right to your email or cell phone. This is Bloomington Today, a presentation of the City of Bloomington's Communications Division. I'm Kaylin Cockreel. Thanks so much for joining us.